What's up everyone, it's Jan Boers, new Humans of Eurovision show today and with no one else than Christer Bjorkman, the legend of Eurovision, the legend of Melody Festivalen, the legend of Sweden and the most influential producer, I would even say person in my professional life in the way how I wanted to improve my skills. And before I just get started and you of course subscribe my channel, share it among your friends and do this stuff you know I'm always talking about to do, I really would like to shout out the Euro Trip podcast as those guys are doing exceptional work interviewing people from Eurovision world and they were of course making one interview with Christer Bjorkman as well and they were talking a lot about Melody Festival and Eurovision of course in the American vision from a fun perspective and I decided to not double this interview as well and I asked more about the staging about the technical stuff how the approach is how Eurovision improved in this way, in technical way, what's more important, the song or the staging or the artist, how this concept really works and as well a lot of personal stuff we had together with Christer you never know about before and we discussed a lot about the backstage as well and of course we touched the American Song Contest or the Big Five issue or the Big Five topic so please check it out, sit down, calm down, have a great drink with you and enjoy me talking with the legend itself, Christer Bjorkman. Hi Christer, I'm really really glad that you just use your precious time to talk to me after like one year we haven't seen each other and after this cr like craziest period probably of our lifetime especially like definitely for my lifetime but tell me how is this period this year was for you um very different and very strange uh, and we had to uh i mean we we all had to adjust our lives to something that we've never been through before and it's uh, it's been challenging uh but also in some ways, it's been almost like uh, a forced upon vacation type of period. Uh, so for me, who had worked like constantly for the last five years without any breaks at all, going from our selection show into a Eurovision and, and then just starting over again, uh, I actually had time to, you know, uh, land and to to recharge and uh, uh, I mean I haven't spent that much time in my home ever I think since I started working so it has been a lot of negative sides but also some positive what did you learn during this period as as I know you you never stop learning yourself from something new um, to actually appreciate just being, I must say, uh, to, to value time, you know, for yourself and your family. And even if, even if we don't, even if I don't meet people that much, I spend a lot of time meeting them on a screen <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and much more than I did before, because I never felt I had the time to stop, you know, but uh, I, I think that's a lesson learned that take time to stop. I mean, the world, the world continues even when you don't, you know, do all that stuff all the time. Yeah, that's right. Actually, that, that's the that's the very wise what you what you're saying. But I'm really curious how this actually this new you kind of like new experience you, you have reflected at your work uh, as a producer. Well, you know. first. I know. And, and first of all, uh, since my, my huge passion in life has always been, you know, Melody Festival and our selection show for the Eurovision and the Eurovision itself. And it actually worked to live your life without Eurovision last year, uh, even though it hurt badly. Uh, it still worked, you know, and, and that is an interesting 
realization that no matter how important you think things are, they they really aren't. You know, they, you go by and, and you continue. And I think that's the best lesson learned that, you know, uh, whatever happens, you find a way out of it and you find a way for to continue. Yeah, but as I know you as well, that you're always looking forward, like you want always to breach new limits, new ways, how, like being even better than your previous self all the yeah. time. Uh, th is this, I know I'm asking still quite the same question, but is this period of time your reflection of the situation and maybe even a little bit settle down, like you were forced to do it anyway, kind of because of the situation? Mm -hmm. Have you think how to push your limits even in this situation to be the best producer in yes. Europe? As I know how competitive you are at this. Yes, absolutely. Because what we had to do in Sweden was, uh, well, you probably know that we do our selection show in a tour with six consecutive weeks, yeah. uh, Saturdays with with four qualifiers, one second chance and a final. We had to redo the whole concept because we knew we cannot be in an arena, we will not have an audience, and how then do we do it? And so first of all, we had to make a completely new concept for how to do it, where we instead went to a studio, we built a studio for our show, and we had no audience at all whatsoever. Uh, and that was that was also the original plan. Let's not mimic or copycat something that pretends to have an audience. Let's mm -hmm. do it without an audience completely. So that was challenging in itself. And that was something that I've never done. I mean, I've only done arena shows. So that was something completely new. And we, we did it and we managed to do it quite well. And we're very pleased with the outcome of it. And that was that was one side. The other side was the how to do it uh, corona safe and the whole procedure of bringing in hundreds of people and how to to actually secure that people did not meet each other mm. they were not uh, cameramen were not meeting with liking people and we uh, the hosts were not meeting with the artist and so on that whole logistic was a nightmare but it actually worked we had two cases throughout the six weeks wow. and they were in just in one bubble and they were t detected very quickly and they were also quarantined very quickly. So they did not spread it to anyone else. So altogether, the experience was um, tedious. It was um, really, really, really difficult and expensive, but we managed to do it and it worked and we could secure the production and we could deliver six shows. So altogether, yes, I learned a lot during mm -hmm. this year and we learned how to do this, but in a totally different way. Yeah, and I must say congratulations to you and your team as well, because I was of course overseeing all those shows and I was really fascinated how you managed to do a show without the audience as you know, I was talking to a lot of my colleagues, like not in Czech Republic, but as well, like whole Europe, like other head of delegations or other producers. And most of them were saying like, okay, it's not possible to do like this without the audience, something will be missing. But you're shown that it's kind of possible, even there is something missing, you just made it that way that I didn't miss it, which I think that's the biggest achievement that you've shown that it's possible. Uh, do you yeah. have these responses as well? Or what would you improve yeah. after this experience? Um, I The only thing that I actually uh, regret that we couldn't do, but that was for lack of money. Uh, I would have, if I would have had a slightly bigger budget, I would have made the entire room as nice looking. Mm -hmm. But... But the others, because the room had like two stages, one smaller, one bigger. Yeah. And we could never actually show the whole room. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have a camera somewhere on 
on a higher level where you could actually show the the viewers the entire room so they could understand when we were going from one stage to another and we were looking at each other when we were talking. So th they did understand that we had two stages and we sort of looked at each other, but they could not understand where they were, you know. Mm -hmm. So so we could never do that. And it, so that would be one thing that I would definitely make different if I would do it again. I would ask for some more money and say, we have to be able to have the old surfaces as nice so we can actually show the whole floor and the whole room. And hold the whole connection. I'm really always fascinated. Like you just done probably the state of art show and you still like immediately grab something which you would like to improve. I That's just super motivational for me as well. And I really appreciated your approach as it's inspired me a lot and I learned a lot from you as, as well from this kind of thing you just, you know, showed me that there's always something to improve as you're absolutely different than lots of producers in the way that you have as well the director's eye. How did happen? How did you learn this? I, I think I've always, um, I mean, I've always worked with shows. Uh, already when I started my my working career, I was a hairdresser uh, from the beginning and I had a salon and I did a lot of shows with models uh, to show new hair, hairstyles. Uh, so already when I was around 20, I started doing shows of different kinds. Then I became an artist and then, of course, I got the perspective of the artist on stage. So I, I've sort of learned piece by piece from different angles. And, and I don't know, maybe it's just something that I have, you know, something that I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know uh, camera production. I don't know lighting, but I can see if things don't look right or if they could be better. So I, I think I just have a, a sense for, you know, in, in one taste there are always different ways of approaching things. And so because taste is like, there's nothing right or wrong, but you, you, I have a very a solid uh, view on my taste and I know how to express it and how to tell creators what I want. Uh, so, so that's a gift that I have, but uh, otherwise I'm just curious. You know, I, I really, really am curious all the time. And I, I, for example, our, our winner this year, uh, Tusa Voices, yeah, he, we, this, this is one of the acts where we actually felt that we did not reach where we wanted to be. Uh, and thank God the song and him is strong enough to carry it anyway. So... Yeah, so now that we are actually preparing that act for the Eurovision, it's so wonderful that we can actually do it again and do it better because we we did not feel that we got there the first time. So we are actually, we did that when we started this interview. I had a meeting before. I, we will continue after the interview to actually go. We go through every second, you know, like. Yeah, okay. I know what is, how was it like, yeah. I yeah. think that's 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 lots of lot of actually people in here in Czech Republic doesn't really understand how like how is that important. But you teach me and your team. You know, it's not just you, but a lot of people you're you're surrounded yourself by. Like, teach me a lot about how this is important. And when I first came to Eurovision 2016, and we had this legendary fight, uh, I I just didn't know what I'm talking about actually because I've never done it before. I just didn't know. Yeah. And over the years, I just like like oh, okay, that means like, but it's really hard when you don't experience those steps. Yeah, but what you but what you had was you had an ambition which is good, even if it led to that we had a slight fight about it, uh, <laughs> because you because you were unexperienced, but you wanted something which is really really good, and it paid off because. Remember when we worked with, it was his name, Josef? Mikolas Josef, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you were, then you were open to negotiate your vision and we together created something which worked 
under the circumstances on that stage and we made a really good act together so and and uh, and you just have to be you know open to um compromising uh, not compromising down but compromising wider you know when it comes to creators you uh, I, I as you said i surround myself with the best in the business that i can find because that makes me better the 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 more clever and 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 skilled and talented people i have around me the better the outcome is and the better i get so it's it's really important to to be very very open uh, in a creative process and actually see okay could this be better than my original idea yeah maybe okay so let's go that way so and that's experience how did you manage and I, that that was one of my first question but we just get somewhere else a bit but let's let's go with the philosophy you have over melody festival maybe towards eurovision as well but as well to philosophy to your team how you share your opinions with other how it's important that you're doing such a show in sweden as well to reach out the best possible professionals or teach the best possible professionals yet to be to help you out to be better how is that important Well, I think that the most important lesson to learn to everyone who works in this project is that it is a team effort. You have to collaborate and you have to put your ego aside because it in some cases it is the lighting that carries the the vision of the song or the act. Sometimes it's the camera work. Sometimes it's the choreography that is the star. And sometimes it can be all these three in one song, but in different parts. And everybody has to be open to actually take a step back to give the other one the 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 opportunity to to shine. So, for example, if you have let let's say Fuego with uh, Eleni Foreira. In that act, you had specific parts where we needed frontal shots for example because the choreography was made in such a way and even if a choreographer hates no uh, a multi camera <laughs> director hates frontals yeah. because they really do and they think it's really boring mm-hmm. but and flat, in this yeah. case yeah but in this case it fills a purpose and you just have to there's no discussion back off even if you know it's wrong just do it because this is where the action is and then you can start doing whatever you want to do but in certain parts of that song at the at the opening of the uh, of the refrains for example it is frontal nothing else works and uh, th- those are fights you always have to have and uh, and lighting and you know the, the, the everybody's a star in this <laughs> that's right but we we are we are walking in the industry full of egos that's that's how it is kind of but i think that what your team shown that you actually can do the step back from it maybe yeah. not that much sometimes but you can do it and you can discuss which i think that's the most important thing as there are of course certain things which are ruled out like you know the front front shot from the cameras whatever like something which you shouldn't do but then you try it with some combination it somehow works uh, yeah how this is and all- important for also, you to yeah sorry come on continue sorry no but no I'm, you're just getting me started i'm think I'm again <laughs> thinking about your your act with the uh, the one we talked about before nicolas just Because, yeah. remember yeah remember how we we had to frame them really really mm-hmm. tight so yeah. that we only show the background behind mm-hmm. the artist or the yeah, dancer yeah we were finding the way how to hide it because it was hard. exactly yeah Yeah, and and that's that's another thing that is so limiting to the multi camera direction, because they just have to be there. You know, nothing else. Don't, no wider, no smaller, just that surface. That's what we want, and they just have to abide to that. You know, and after all, it really worth it because it was looking really great, and I'm still I'm yeah. still showing this to people in here, and they still don't understand that it's a live performance. You know that. I'm always like, yeah, it is. And yeah, it is. That that's the music video yeah. with three minutes live. Come on, 
yeah. it's possible. Yeah, we're we'll, always showing like what's uh, possible. You know, it's a good example. Yeah, and we and we love to do that. We love to make it look like a, a live video, which is so cool. Yeah, no one other do do it. Like it's very original, like pushing the limits. But it wasn't the Eurovision when you have started to working on it. It definitely wasn't that technological, or it was very different. How do you see this? change over time this evolution of eurovision maybe it's a revolution of eurovision in that way how the television works really just rockets jump somewhere else how was it hard for you to really adapt to it uh well it took it took me a while to understand because actually the inspiration to this comes from the the old eastern countries actually in the in the first decade of the 20th, 21st century, because they brought in um, a spice, you know, to this contest that was, because the, the, for example, the Scandinavian style is very minimalistic. It's quite cold, very sort of, you know, stylish. Stylish, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, in came, you know, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Russia, Belarus with huge expressions and lots of feelings and colors. And and we were like, whoa, whoa, what is this? What <laughs> I still have this feeling this... sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it still happens that they go overboard and, and it's uh, too much. But But something in it actually is very attractive because it's... Even when it becomes too much, then you can say, okay, enough is enough. But it has brought new energy into the competition. And once we got used to it, we could cherry pick. You know, we could, we could under, start to understand, okay, bigger expressions, warmth, feelings, uh, those, those things that are positive in it, we could extract from that and add to our own very cold uh, kind of expression. So, and I think that that's actually what, what started this process. And then once we had started it, then we were on a, on a road to, you know, okay, how do we develop our own way in this? And that actually started the sort of music video uh, type of exploring. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's part of it. So, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we, we inspired you in some different ways, probably, because for us it was definitely a new thing. In different, actually, we learned, I learned a lot from, like, Scandinavia, kind of, actually, but with the different appeal as I just found out, and that's... A, like topic I really would like to talk to you about that stagings like as my feeling from Scandinavia kind of it's okay you have a great American music or Sc Scandinavian music which influencing the world which voices definitely mm. are it's it's the worldwide hit kind of appeal mm. Mm. and it's very centric and very focused on a staging like how to sell the song on stage and sometimes I have a feeling there is a lack of or there is a less time inv invested in the songs itself and the artist. It's more about how to express it on stage. Do you have this feeling as mm. well, or is it just my feeling, or how the staging is important in that way too? As I remember, 2016, when there was Ukraine winning with something which was more music-centric mm. against kind of Russia, which was definitely more staging-centric which was yeah. for me was a, like a huge thing, which I'm still thinking about unless what is more important is, is can, can this be said? Uh, you, you, you certainly have a point. Uh, I think, um, I mean, to me, this competition has three legs. One is the song. Mm -hmm. One is the staging. Mm hmm and one is the artist charisma, mm -hmm. which includes voice, obviously. But charisma, I would say, is more 
the whole artist expression kind of thing. yeah e exactly so those three and sometimes you have two sometimes you have only one if mm -hmm. at worst <laughs> at, or nothing well, I, i probably but, saw even worse like zero yeah but, yeah but 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 if you really really are lucky sometimes once in a while all those three are combined in one act and that's when you get a Lorian or you know it, it's it's not that often but to get up to top three you you need at least two and a half of those uh, and and it's when that happens uh, you also feel that you have a chance to actually win this so so what is most important well it's hard to say because the audience votes on one thing and the jury's on another and that's why i i believe that it's so important to have both of them because together they sort of give us a kind of fair result uh, but which one isolated is the most important wow And maybe that's not the, there's no a right answer to it, you know, like, like maybe no, that's maybe... the combination of approaches and maybe the spice you were talking about or the flavor, whatever combination it is, that there is yeah. no exact answer to it is some, like Salvador Sobral, that was the great example, like how maybe this, con like this conversation we're having over staging is very irrelevant because if you're just yeah. have it, if you're like, kind of, of course, if you just have it as him. It was kind of no staging, even it was a most creative staging or maybe more most, how to say it, more courageous staging, like to don't have it at all, like yeah. this decision. Yeah, I remember, But he was I, I the remember that he was him himself, the artist. Yeah, yes. And I have to say about that case, it's very, very, it's a very good example because we, the production wanted to get rid of that little stage mm -hmm. because it wasn't really used. Mm. And it came to a point where, all right, should we just keep a stage for the hosts? Mm. You know, and and I said, well, we have one song that should be there. So I started fighting for that stage to keep it because I knew that that would make him totally different from everything else we would see in that. So his staging was actually your decision or your idea, basically. Yes. But, and I sold it on Carla, uh, who is the head of delegation mm -hmm. for, for Portugal and she loved it. And, and so we fought very hard to keep that stage and we, and we did in the end. And, and it also, so that's one other interesting thing that, If you create something that is nothing, but in in a sea of everything, where everybody screams for attention, like uh, most people do in the Eurovision, mm -hmm. if you don't do anything and you don't scream at all, you can stick out, which he did. Yeah. Which also, if I go to another artist, we had an artist in 16, France, Mm -hmm. uh, and he he ended up he had the smallest little song but it was and fast he was he, he was smiling i can just remember it very very well it, it, yeah he had a good smile but the song is like it doesn't scream for attention at all uh and that also managed to pop out in big 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 numbers you know and he was like just Uh, so, so you can actually use it oppositely as well to do nothing when everybody else does everything. Yeah, but maybe that's that a bit works. of trend, kind of as maybe uh, toy in Israel was a different, very different uh, example. But there are like Duncan Lawrence that was kind of a same like keep it simple, keep it minimalistic, but. Just keep it artist centric. Do you think that this maybe it's a new like kind of revolution at Eurovision to bring it like be more artic centric? Do you, do you actually think that Eurovision kind of miss big stars 
made by Eurovision to the world. You know that that it's lux of somebody who just you know go around the world like Laureen maybe was with Euphoria, maybe like Duncan Lawrence is right now to attract even more people, make the brand bigger, and maybe that's the style that that's not too much about the staging but the artist. Well, obviously it's more it's more likely that a person who is a real artist, I mean, you know, that you, yeah, yeah. you that ha that has that its you own, have feeling that it is the one. Yeah. Uh that that they have a greater chance of actually establishing themselves on a bigger market. Uh and if they would compose themselves, it's even more likely. Uh, and we all know that from history, that that, that is the case. Uh, but I do believe that as long as we can produce some, you know, international hit songs that will attract the right artists and the right composers. So it's, I think it's really, really important that that not too many phenomena win this competition uh and we need hits like fuego we need hits like duncan we we, we need those songs that actually travel further than their their national borders so um i i i think it's doing fine um i think to this year as well i think there are quite a few good songs uh, that can actually travel quite good. I actually think that this year as well is the most competitive year ever, probably. Like the, I can see it. Like this, is my subjective opinion, of course. But I see that all, like most of the countries, just step up the game and want to be better, not intentionally win the contest. Maybe that there are not so many songs which has this appeal, but definitely the average quality risen up. Why do you think that happened? For the same reason, I would say that our selection show was one of the best we've had ever. Because pe people have had time. People have had uh, the ambition to actually put energy into this because there was not very much to do uh, otherwise. Uh, so I think it's... it's um, um, inspiration that they haven't gotten out of themselves in a long time and also that we managed to get good artists into it because people haven't had any work so i think that's one of the uh, one of the reasons um at least that we can feel that in the swedish selection show definitely yeah but i would even say that uh, the brand itself just risen up that the producers also. i think the music producers from the music industry which always kind of struggle with tv it's not in sweden but in lots of like European countries, those two worlds doesn't really cooperate. I don't know what reason there is behind it, but uh, the thing is that there is a huge argument: two hundred million people watching the show. Like, maybe yeah. do, do you think that this argument that the Eurovision itself, just the brand, it's rising up glo globally more than ever, is as well the reason that it attracts not just the biggest, bigger stars in their domestic markets, but maybe even new talents as they feel that this is possible to shine like to say is mm -hmm. yeah i agree uh there there are several reasons i i would say i think the movie helped as well mm -hmm. in uh, some countries and yeah. yeah and i mean the oscar nomination for the theme song that's gonna help uh so there there are several uh, and that and that build has gone on for the last i don't know six seven years maybe uh i and uh, not i i wouldn't give madonna that much of uh yeah credit, I, I have but, a good but, good talk about it with, with you on all our like <laughs> probably we all on the same page with this yeah but justin on the other hand that was a good performance so it's it's worth trying um I mean, all routes are worth trying when you build a brand. You know, it's uh, uh, so sometimes you just fail. How are you actually? And that's a good, good thing to. I really would like to know your opinion about this. As in some countries, in some televisions, there are no, there's no risks 
like that's check television way as well like not risk too much okay you will not fail but you will not learn too much as well do you agree that you sometimes need to fail maybe even a bit lot more than you expect to learn and just do things way better than you ever imagined because of the fail of the yes. failure yes absolutely uh, I mean, if you never, ever take a risk, you will never, ever gain. Uh, that's, that's for sure. Uh, if you play it safe all the time, you don't develop, you don't make, you can never, never reach those. I remember when we did, uh, uh, we came to Baku with Lorraine, uh, and everybody said to us, Oh, you have a great chance to win this, but you have to light her up. You can't see her eyes. It's too dark. You have to, you know, you just put, you put some light on her. You're crazy. You're, you're wasting a victory. And it's like, hmm. So I, I, actually, <laughs> I, and I actually went to Lorien and I said, you know, these are things that I hear. And I just want you to be aware of it because... We've decided to do it this way, but I want you to be aware and I want you to, to be the one to take the decision. Do you feel that you want to go safer and actually do what people expect? Or do you want to stay with the vision that we have? And she said, I'd rather be number five and do exactly what we do. So I said, cool, let's do it. Let's go for it. And then obviously... We, that set a new trend on how to to work with light. So uh, yeah, you have to you have to take some brave decisions sometimes, and actually just do it because you believe in it. Yeah, one other brave decision in my eyes actually was the 2018 performance of Benjamin Ingrosso, which for sure was music video in three minutes all in absolutely no audience. Do you think that kind of backfired you? This, that it was too technical? Like, what, what was your feedback on it? How, how do you do those feedbacks? As for me, this is, I don't know the answer, you know, like it's really hard. It no. could be a million factors, but, but what was your feedback to it? That audience didn't kind well, of like it? Uh, well, I mean, again, he, he did not scream for attention at mm -hmm. all. I yeah, mean, for he, sure. he, he he looked into the camera like once every refrain and did a nod. And that was it. That was the only time he flirted with the audience. And uh, that didn't work because that flew right over the heads of the people. Uh, but again, it's like, uh, that's what we wanted to do. And it was an extremely cool act. And yeah, I, I don't question this, but the, 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 the question... No, I know. I but, love it. Uh, I, I know like, you for don't. me it was like the top notch television work. Like probably viewers don't really understand how demanding it is as well to do this decision or really find the formula how to how to film it, you know. It's not very easy to do it. It's very demanding no. on each department doing such a work. And it's like a lot of people yeah. should understand the idea. But yeah. After all you but, and it worked for juries, which probably they have this professional eye and start see like okay that was demanding but audience doesn't really care about this so no do you think no. that it was just a bad luck or you know it may, could be bad luck you know i don't know no what was your feedback i don't think to? well different uh, some people uh said that we went too far in the music video thinking uh you could argue that but then again if if you do a vision and you do that together with the artist, do you start to compromise to to probably follow again the same thing as we said about Lorien? No, uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, but we can still look at that and feel uh, extremely proud of what we did because it's beautiful. Uh, but and in the Eurovision, there are some truths that you have to remember. And it's like, you need contact with the artist to reach the viewer. And, and if you don't sell the song that way, it is more difficult and it is risk, more risky. Uh, so 
Uh, and sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. It, it's like, that's part of the game. And it's no big deal, really. It's like, he, I mean, he, he was number seven in the end. That's a yeah, good that's result. Great. No, I'm asking this specifically because I was asked this question about Lake Malawi in 2019. We tried a combination of it, you know, kind of framing a specific idea and then the audience. And then I was, you know, asked to show some of the concept for some other country doing staging. And I was asked and I felt a bit uncomfortable with this. Like, why do you think Lake Malawi failed? And I said, like, I did, did it. They were eleventh. They were that's the second best yeah, result we ever had. But of course, there was the question for why didn't audience vote it for it? I was like, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, I will never know. I can speculate. It could be a million things and nothing. It's just bad luck, or there were better competition. I don't know. Yeah. And and I, you have the answer there. There is no way you can tell. And and and. I liked that staging. I thought it was good. Uh, I, I liked your ideas uh, in 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 that song, and with his um, artistic body language, it fit well. Uh, I, and and again, eleven is a good result. It's like uh, you know, and and you never know what the competition is when you go there, no, and you, you can't even think like this. You... No, there's no way you cannot sit and wait to see what the others have and then choose. So maybe, maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe also he was a little bit the same as you had the year before. Maybe it's sort of, okay, that looks familiar. I, I don't know. I haven't got a clue. That's it. We can speculate. We, we can probably find million reasons for it, you know, like million reasons. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. because like I still don't have the one for Benjamin Ingrosso. Maybe it was like less m looking at the camera, but I was sold, so I don't know what was the problem, you know. No, but but then again, I think if you reach, you know, what top ten, twelve, fourteen, something of forty, you're in the hands of the competition. It's a good result. It's a good solid result. It means you have at least two out of the three uh, components in 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 store. Uh, maybe so. Uh, you can't really argue with that result. It's like yeah. Sometimes you do it a little bit better. Sometimes it's average. Uh, but it's not a failure. Failure is when you're at you don't reach the final or you're in the bottom of the final. That's a failure. Uh, then you can discuss. Uh, but if you're like 10, 12, whatever, it's good. It's a good result. It's a fierce, it's a f fierce competition. Yeah, that's right. Especially when you say it's a kind of failure when you don't reach the finals. I wouldn't even say that being last at the finals, it's that harsh kind of, it is of course very uncomfortable, but you're in the finals anyway. I think it's very yeah. different optics. How do you actually look at big uh, big five countries which are automatically in the finals? And in my eyes, they still kind of, if I just count off Italy, which they're doing exceptional job because they have a great music market cooperating with Eurovision, that's my opinion, but yeah. the rest of the countries, they just don't know how to grab grab it but they have as well a big uh, responsibility towards the rest of the countries if they're automatically in, don't you think? Yeah, and and if we if we put it in in two different perspectives, if we don't even go to is it right or wrong, because that's that I, I believe that's for someone else to take that decision. But I feel sorry for them because I love the fact that happens every year that some songs enter into the semi-final, not talked about too much, not mentioned in the, you know, speculations. And all of a sudden, when you see all these three components together, something happens. And you can tell overnight on the odds how they just shoot up like a rising star. And all of a sudden, they are a contender. We've seen it happen so many times. Uh, Belgian guy, uh, 
Noit Ben, what's his, uh, what was Loic. his name? The, yes. Nobody talked about him before the semifinals. And then all of a sudden, he was the talk of the town mm-hmm. in 15. Fantastic performance and artistry. And all of a sudden, that song was understandable in a, in a totally different way. It was beautiful. Uh, Eleni Ferreira, I think she was 18 or 20 before the semifinal. And all of a sudden, she became the favorite because yeah. of the combination of her artistry, the song, and the act. And they missed that opportunity. That, that's stupid. It's, it's, I mean, it's madness not to want to be part of that. Hmm? Why do you think it's, that's happening? I think, I think the person who is the head of delegation is afraid that if they would uh, create a situation where they actually became part of the semifinals and they wouldn't make it to the final, they would be crucified. <laughs> Of course, and the Eurovision will lost a lot of audience as well, probably. But I'll give you a different yeah. perspective. I, I'm not really sure that their televisions, like the public broadcaster, can really spo- talk to their music industry and really tell them, like, you have 200 million people watching it. Like, even if you don't like it, even if it's, if it's a really, like, bizarre show, it's 200 people, 200 million people watching. Like, how can you say no to it? Mm. That's what what un- understandable to me. Like you're automatically in the final, so you can do whatever you want. Like yeah. you have no limits. Yeah, and if you look at, I mean, look at Italy. I mean, they have a fantastic track record from like, when they came back. Oversee San Remo. It's like they have like top ten material in top ten of their San Remo. You know. Their, yeah. their music industry just sends the best to their melody yes. festival and, you know, the best and the best wins, yeah. whoever it is, because they're all great and they're gr- yeah. doing great results all the time. Maybe that's the great, uh, like the best possible approach if it's somehow possible to combine those two worlds, you know. Yeah. Because you're in Sweden, you you just made this happen because your both of those industry television and the music just work together because they understand how like what's in stake yeah and it and it, and it took some years for them to actually cave in and to to persuade them that this was a good platform but now that that's been accepted it's you know it's it's quite yeah. easy would you say that the stamina that you had that you just didn't stop making the, like you stick to the idea you had really helped that out as well. Yeah. And, and they know now that we never stop. Uh, we, we always strive to make more, better, different, mm. whatever you want to call it, but that we never ever just lean back and stop and just do it. We, we really, really try to innovate ourselves all the time. Yeah, and the part of the innovation of yourself and your team is going to the U.S. I know you were questions, you have questioned it, like you were questioned a million times. I was talking with um, Ola Meltzik about it in my, like one of the first interviews I made. And he, like, this is, as I see it as a great opportunity for like the Eurovision brands to even rise a lot more. But you will have a free hands as well. So what will... What what is the big difference? Like you said it in a million interviews, but my question is more about if you have the free hands now in the US, what to do and how to do it, what definitely you will not bring from the Eurovision world to the US, which you don't really want that, want there, what you don't like? Well, one thing is that to have 41 or 42 or 43 faces giving points from each country only works because there's a tradition because it's the worst tv ever. longest tv <laughs> yeah <laughs> and if you if and you unpredictable do whatever it stop connection or whatever you know yeah and people talking in length about something that they feel is important that nobody else cares about 
oh god that is tedious uh but that for one is not doable on in a new show where you are supposed to sell an idea so we no we will not have 50 states giving points no uh not on screen <laughs> 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 I think that's a good decision, yeah. Uh, or we'll see. We'll see. I like it. Uh, how actually do you think that this brand, as for me, is a huge opportunity to as well show that you don't need karaoke shows like X Factors or you know kind of karaoke. They're always repl replicating the song somebody else already made in a maybe different arrangement, mm. but still the same song. How do mm. you think that this brand actually can show this big strength that? It just puts in original sound all the time, every year, every season. Well, that is the idea we have to sell to them. Um, and I, I mean, if there's something that the Americans are good at, it's actually music. selling things, of course, yeah, and music, whatever, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I actually feel quite confident that they uh, will be able to sell it once they understand the complexity of it. Uh, we are what we're trying to uh, determine is what actually is the comparison to what we have as a state. You know what? What? Where do you find that pride? Because they don't necessarily have that same connection to a like state. Europeans, yeah. They rather have it to maybe a city. Uh, in a smaller state where you don't, that in a smaller state where you don't have those big hubs, that that's there you might go for the state. So you will have to have different approaches depending on the where where the artist is connected. Uh, also, an American is usually connected to at least three states. One where they have uh, their family, their parents or grandparents. That could be one or even two states. Uh, one where they went to college. They're very, very connected to the college due to sports. Because they they have a team. All all of them have a team yeah. uh, of some kind. And, and everything is that they root yeah. for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then in the end they settle down somewhere where they work and, and bring, you know, create their own family. So they do have several connection points which in a way makes it easier to find artists that are, you know, that we need. We need artists from all 50 states, obviously, to, to do this. So uh, that's one challenge to actually, you know, pinpoint what is the trigger point for... Where, where the, the heart lies, yeah. E exactly. So, uh, but it's very interesting. It's very interesting to, to, to have these conversations and these meetings with the Americans to actually you know, figure out, okay, where, can, where can do you we zoom, put... Can you zoom me in? How does, how does such conversation really look like? Like, give me an example. Like, I can probably imagine, but I'm not sure that my viewers do, you know. Well, the, like everyone else, we, we sit like this with a screen and we have all these squares with people. Oh, yeah, million people. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, been, uh, it's been very, very interesting and very strange and... Uh, but we're we're getting there slowly but surely, so uh, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully we will be able to do it. And and if if we are to do it, it 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 will probably be already in twenty two. Yeah, that that probably makes sense as you need to prepare a lot of things and stuff around it because the production it's yeah. not just it can happen one one month to the other, but it never really work out well. In my in, in my opinion, like that, that's not really a wise thing to do. Anyway, do you expect the big diversity of songs in the U.S. as it's a cradle of so many new current styles? Yeah, I mean that's the that's the best part of it all. It's that the American music scene is so wide. It's so, I mean, you have that built into the culture, really. Different areas have different styles. Yeah, different uh, that cultural are approaches. Even in these, the styles they they are everywhere. Yeah. So and they are also the origin of a lot of styles in music. So, I I I really really look forward to doing it because it's going to be very interesting. 
to see what will come out of it. And, and hopefully it will, you know, bring new energy into the format that could spill over to Europe as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do think that the Europe, Europe, the Eurovision itself, the Eurovision, the original Eurovision needs a competitor like the US as well to have a feedback on what's as well possible, how to like really competition. Yeah, I, I really don't see that it is a competitor. I see it more as a, a, a brother or sister that is actually, you know, lifting each other. Yeah, that's how you, uh, well, that's, that's wordplay, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I wouldn't be uh, so, like how Texas do in it. Like, like, wow, I haven't like think about this idea. We need to do it as well, you know, kind of thing like this. But because I think that it will be different due to that it is one country, it's one language, but that language has so many different uh, faces. And so we will, we will hear every type of music style within that language. And that's going to make it totally different from the Eurovision in a sense, because it will all be written by Englishmen or Americans in the English language. And that means that obviously the quality will be, has a possibility to be extremely good when it comes to lyrics, for example. I mean, in, in Europe, we, we have lots of examples of people trying to write English lyrics. But it's hard. But they are of course, they are now that it's not our native language, so it's very different how we approach it. Yeah, because we, we usually approach it from uh, our own language that put, put in English. And it works sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't work. So to, an, to I mean, to a, an English-born person to listen to some of the songs from the Eurovision is like... What? Yeah. What? I, heard, I, I what? saw it many times, but that's actually really... <laughs> Really funny as for me as a U continental European English definitely is not my native language. I always like lyri lyrics actually are not that important to me in the songs as well. Like from to say so like lots of people from America say like all oh, the lyrics they are kind of like bland or like what is it all about? I was like I can imagine like what is it about? It's like voices. I can like imagine the story behind it. I don't need the connection between the words because I barely like. understand it at the first listen. I'm not focusing at yeah. it. I'm focusing on the sound, on the expression, something very different. But I'm not a native speaker. So for me, it's still a language which I just can switch off, you know. Right. And in America, the lyrics are essential. They, they are very, very lyric driven. The all music in America is. So it's, it, it's, so that whole approach is totally different. So it will be different and it will be something else, which is good. How is for you, and that would, will be my last question because we are, I, I just, you know, it's, it's, it's long enough, I think, but how hard for you is to switch from European mentality thinking to the US one, which I think it very, it's very different as well in Europe from country to country as well, but that's a big step in very different way how to approach people as well to understand you. So how, how this is hard yeah. for you or easy? Uh, it is. Well, for me personally, it's not that difficult because as a contest producer for the Eurovision, you have to be very flexible and you have to adjust very quickly to different types of people and cultures and how, how they behave. And, and you, you know this more than anyone that sometimes you can actually tell by, if I would write down a conversation, you would be able to say, hmm, I think that's that country. And I would say, <laughs> yes, you know, be, because... Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I'm 100% I'm person sure that, that that's exactly how it is, yeah. Yeah, so there are stereotypes. Yeah. And with the Americans, uh, I, I mean, I, I studied in the States for two years, so I, I, mm -hmm. I so do have some it. experience... Yeah, so I to me for me to adjust to it, it's not that difficult. Um, I have a plan uh, on how to behave, uh, which is which is to to actually lie low, uh, f you know, till they actually say they need me, uh, and 
then I will say I would have done it this way. Uh, could you know you could try that? Uh, I you don't tell you don't tell the Americans what to do because they do believe that they can do everything themselves, and that's a, usually a good thing. Uh, so uh, and I have no problem with that. So I will be there uh, to support them and to try to help them avoid huge mistakes. Yeah, which which could be what, you know. actually, the huge mistake. What actually is the well, like, the mistake we, as a, us as a delegation, like, in general, are doing? And you just say, like, why again? Like, what? What, what happens? I, I told them many million times, I hate it. What's the huge yeah. mistake? I I would say in this when it comes to it's more like working with a host broadcaster that's never done it before. Uh you and you could compare it to a child. You know, you you can tell a child don't do that because it's going to burn you. Mm -hmm. And it's going to hurt until they do it and burn themselves out. And then they know, but they will have to burn themselves once mm -hmm. in a while. And this is actually what we do. We we try to, you know, so they avoid mistakes that will cost them time and a lot of money. Yeah, but as a keeper so, of a, as a keeper of the license of the format, you are more yeah. likely there to avoid those burns, aren't you? But yeah, but that's only format questions. Uh, we we are there to protect the format. However, when it comes to making a huge production like this, you know, if you don't do the tenders in the right order, and if you don't do the scenography first, then the lighting cannot start and the camera work cannot start, you know, just to do things in the right order and at the right time. The, these are things that matter for the production and for the costs and the cost saving. And we, you know, if, if we could say from the beginning, do it this way, Here's a plan. Uh, then they would save a lot of money, but they have to learn themselves because they they. So it th there are different things that we would be able to help them avoid, but they will. The first year they will do mistakes, and we will just be there and say, "Okay, now let's make it right." <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that 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 actually takes me that actually takes me back to start of the conversation where we had the. Big fight uh, in 2016, just for my audio audience to know, I was kind of pissed off that that we just didn't have a right like enough time to to perform our rehearsal, and then I was yelling at Matthias Carlson and you, and you were trying to really tell me that that it was actually for a good reason or there was a reason behind it and nothing. Well, I was like mental completely. So I really would like to use this interview as well as a sorry because I never I never said it to you. Because I still have it in my mind as a, like a mistake which I did and never say sorry to because I was too proud. I'm not a, like not anymore. I think I'm grown up man, hopefully. But uh, yeah, yeah, I really yeah. would like to tell you thank you very much for what you and your teammates really helped me to learn. Because in here, in my environment, I'm living in, there is nothing very even close to it what you are guys doing with your national selections as well and you're inviting all of us from different countries to even watch it and learn you know i think what's very important and of course i wish you a huge luck that you will bring this energy to the us as well and maybe find new great creators and teach them how to do a great tv and maybe they will approach us as well and we can cooperate together one day Thank you very much for this yeah. great interview. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, guys. And that was Christer Bjorkman. And the great interview, I would say, I really enjoyed it. I hope you did enjoy it as well. And you learned something new. I think you learned a lot of new things you probably haven't even thought before, hopefully. And if you just write me which one was it in the comments below. Of course, let's discuss about this as there's a lot to talk about especially with this interview and how inspirational Christer is towards all of us probably fans producers whoever who are in touch with Eurovision as well 
and of course I'll ask you to subscribe the channel, like the video, share it among your friends, share it among the community to help me grow, to help those ideas and those information will just get to the most, to the most funds and maybe to the most funds of you know television and music and I will bring you new episodes soon so see you next time thank you for watching bye